The first step in any freehand drawing on skin is to get the basic shapes of the design roughed out with either a light green or yellow permanent marker, as I'm doing here. This is done with a sketchbook drawing available nearby for reference. In the sketchbook, you can see that there are actually several slightly different drawings of the subject. The version I'm drawing on the skin is combining my favorite parts from each of these three sketches. The eyes and nose from one of them, the mouth from another, and the perspective and placement from a third to make for a stronger design. During this first stage, the marker can be applied quickly and without worrying about neatness because the cleaning up that comes later with the darker colored markers will overwhelm the messiness of the light green marker and make the drawing appear clean without the need for erasing. Starting with a darker colored marker at this early stage is likely to result in a messier process involving more erasing and less clarity with finished drawing. Normally, I would try to do this short first step with the client standing up in a neutral position to get the placement and proportions right before putting him on the table like he is here. But in this case, standing him up would have put the body part too close to the floor. So after getting the basics of the skull laid out in the light green marker, I'll have him get up off the table and make sure the design doesn't appear crooked when he's standing in a natural position. It's much easier to make changes at this early stage than later on when the drawing has been finished with the darker colored markers. With the basics of the design roughed out on the skin with light green marker, the next step is to come in with a medium tone marker, such as this turquoise one, and bring the drawing up to the next level of refinement. Getting more exact with the details, going over some of those messy lines and putting down clean lines instead, and fine tuning everything else that was roughed in during that first step. Any important design decisions that hadn't already been worked out during that light green marker stage are being made now especially the major dark and light areas, the gradients, and the posneg relationships of all the fundamental parts of the composition, as shown in figure 320A. Just as important is figuring out how the piece will break off into the surrounding skin, how smaller textures and details will be distributed through the piece, and what areas will be left out of focus. You can see that I'm not just drawing lines, I'm also blocking in some of the dark areas with the marker. This is a great way to clearly spell out how the major positive and negative relationships will read in the tattoo, aiming to create a thorough and readable composite of those three pencil sketches. I'm trying to concentrate the darkest areas into the eyes, nose, and mouth, with a little bit of deep shadow under the cheekbones to lift them out while leaving the cheekbones themselves, the forehead, and the teeth as light and open as possible in order to produce maximum impact. A design like this will read clearly from across the street because of its large and distinct alternating light and dark elements. Once the design has been established on the skin with medium marker, the next thing to do is go in with a dark colored marker, either a dark purple or black in most cases, and repeat the step done in medium marker, this time being even more precise and clear. I'm also blocking in some of the dark areas here not simply doing a black outline through the design. The goal of this step is to produce a drawing that will not only convey the essential information from the three sketchbook drawings, but also hold up to all the wiping and other sort of messy activities that normally go on during the application of a tattoo. In addition to making the drawing strong, I'm also using this opportunity to develop the composition further, deciding which elements will have strong edges and where things should be left soft, where the darkest shading will be concentrated and where to hold back a little bit and keep things light and simple. As shown earlier in video clip 27, occasionally I'll go back to the medium colored marker and use it to blend the inks from that dark marker, creating some nice watercolor light gradations in the drawing. This technique provides access to the whole value scale while still only requiring the use of three different markers and can make the development of the shading and the design a much more intuitive process. Obviously, this drawing is not being done in the colors that the finished tattoo is going to be done in, and this occasionally will need to be explained to clients who may not understand this, but what I'm aiming for here is to create a comprehensive value study of the design. Toward the very end, I'm going back to the light green marker and using it for some blending as well, creating more volume in the foreground shapes where I want to be sure not to go too dark. 
This provides access to an even broader value scale and can especially be useful as a final step to give the design the mid-tones it needs to express the maximum volume and dimension as shown in figure 320B. The finished drawing takes less than 20 minutes but has all the information necessary to take the tattooing process from start to finish.